I am Maya Izquierdo. I'm part of Elysian team from the YouTube channel Game Changers. Today we have a special guest and she is from Brooklyn. Okay, Paula Gomez. Paula is an experienced and talented educator who has been causing a positive impact on students' lives for more than 10 years. We are so grateful to have you here with us. Thank you for coming, Paola. Thank you for the very special invitation. I feel honored to be here. Um, my first question is, we believe you are a game changer because of your work on education. You change students' lives every day. How do you feel about this? Do you consider yourself a game changer? Well, I feel joyful and responsible. I feel joyful because I, I'm privileged to see how many human beings go from feeling small, powerless, to discovering the, the strength and the potential that they have within. So that discovery makes me feel joyful because I'm like, I'm just like walking with them along the way. They call me a guide or a tutor, but I feel guided as well because they keep me, they keep me on track and they remind me my mission as an educator. And I also feel responsible because I think that every young person, every child um, is a potential leader, a potential mom, dad, engineer, psychologist, friend, and uh, any legacy that can be a, pr a product of my interactions with my student or whatever I help my student accomplish, well, then that's a great responsibility I have as an, as an educator. That's, uh, we understand that feeling uh, and that's beautiful. That's a beautiful feeling. <laughs> um, our second question uh, is, how did you become a teacher? When did you realize that you love teaching? Well, um, as many things in life, uh, if you're lucky enough, you are exposed to situations that trigger uh, your reactions or your will or your curiosity. I used to be an accountant and a financial analyst. I used to work in, in finances. I was, I mean, that was my first job for six years. And um, my boss has uh, put me in charge of the interns from high schools. That's a very common, it used to be very common in the past that when you were in second back, you know, in second bachillerato, you, were, you would uh, go and do internships in different companies. So I was in charge of like 50 uh, teenagers every year. <laughs> and I was the only one who could make them do everything they had to do. And they followed my lead. And that was pretty curious because they didn't listen to anybody else. You know, probably because I could connect with them. Probably I was too young and they felt uh, that kind of possibility to talk to me and listen to me and follow my lead. But I realized that that's something I, I couldn't ignore because I felt immensely happy. It was blissful to work with those kids. And I started to feel miserable as a financial analyst. So, Whilst everybody told me that I would die of hunger and be poor for the rest of my life being a teacher because I wanted to leave my job. I was doing an amazing job as, a, as an accountant, as an analyst. I was good at it, but I was not happy. And then I made the decision to become a teacher and I left my job, I quit. And I started a different, different adventure that was it broadens anxiety and uncertainty, and at some point doubts and sadness, because I was actually somehow poor <laughs> at some point as I was trying to get a job, but that uh, scarcity and that this decision was so strong that everything went on the right track. I worked really hard and I became a teacher and it was born right there when I stopped doing a job that made me so unhappy. I'm Valentina and I have, it's a pleasure to be you, to be with us. 
I have two questions for you. My first question is, have you ever wanted to give up? Why or what happened? Well, I would be a, a liar. I would lie through my teeth if I have never, I told you, I have never felt defeated or exhausted or worn out. But that's a human feeling. We have the right to feel tired, right? Because we are not machines. So have I ever felt like that? Definitely. But did it last long? No, because that's something I have learned. You have to be your best friend. And whenever you feel like giving up, you have to talk to yourself with love. Like, okay, you're tired. Just take a rest. You're not a quitter. This is just a problem. It's not the end of the world. You will find a way out, a solution. And, and not only that, but I have always had a, a beautiful, wonderful support system in my family, in my closest friends, in my friends who are also my colleagues, teachers. So I have always reached out for help. We are not machines, we're not alone. And whenever we feel hopeless and we want to give up, we just have to call a friend or a family relative and ask for help and admit that we are not perfect, that we cannot deal with everything all the time. Some days everything becomes so heavy that it's always a measure of mental sanity and a strategic to ask for help and say, you know, I cannot deal with this right now. Would you please help me out? And if you have to cry, you cry. And if you have to sleep, you sleep. But that's just one moment. It's not your entire life. So yes, I have failed at giving up, but I have never given up. That's a different thing. Thank you for your answer. I understand. It's a good uh, energy you put in these situations. Hola, I'm Julieta Padilla, and it's a pleasure. And I have a question for you. My question is, how would you describe the beginning of virtual classes in 2020? Was it hard for you? Well, I think that in this regard of the fact that I'm a little bit techy, which means I'm pretty curious with technology and it, I'm not the best at it, but I'm, I'm so curious that I don't care if I spend hours trying to figure something out. I always figure things out, watching tutorials or searching for blogs and that I spend hours figuring things out, figuring Zoom out. Uh, learning how to use a digital board, learning how to keep my students in silence. <laughs> because at some point, I mean, we didn't know how to do it. And you know, kids are kids. And uh, we need to have like a little bit of control. So it was, oh my God, it was a moment of, exp of learning. It was a paradigm shift. It was learning how to unlearn what I had done before and thinking that my classroom was an abstract concept. I mean, what used to be uh, me being able to touch, you know, the board and the desks, it disappeared. And it became just an idea in my head. So seeing education from such a different perspective was painful. Not having kids every day, because you learn from people from their stuff, you know, looking at my kids' pencil cases, knowing that they like Nirvana, knowing if they, if they like Bug Bunny, or knowing if they like to read, I was missing the chance to get all of that information from them and to connect with them. But then I discovered Mentimeter, I discovered um, Padlet. So even if I didn't have the chance, I told them I need to see who you are. <laughs> So create a presentation about yourself. Tell me who you are, what you like, what you feel annoyed by. So I just found new ways to get information because I really like to know who my students are. I cannot be a good teacher if I don't know who my students are, what they need. And if, sometimes if you don't want to share much about yourself, that's fine, but I will always find out because you communicate a lot from the way you dress and the way you wear your hair and the way you talk and the way you move. So that's precious information we get. 
right? And then I, I found out uh, that, I mean, I already knew that as a teacher, that meant uh, being in a constant learning process, but I learned a lot more about technology myself, other people, probably than ever before. Not even in college did I learn so much because I had to read a lot on how to deal with an emergency learning because we cannot call that online learning because it was in the middle of a pandemic. So maybe that, I learned that I could survive a pandemic at that moment uh, that virtual classes started and I thought how to do things the best I could. Hi Paola, I am Kiana Viles and I have a question and a little message for you. First question is, we all have fears and sometimes they stop us from doing the things we love. How have you overcome your fears? What advice you hold you give to the teenagers? Well, um, you know, there's something that is, it sounds a little bit awful, but it's like you have to be your best friend in the sense that I know we can have a support system, but it is not until you convince yourself that you can do things and you tell yourself every day that you're capable, that you have the potential to achieve things, that you are smart, that you deserve to reach any goal that you put yourself into action because no teacher, not your parents, not a friend will help you reach your goals, like for real. It's you, yourself. It's a struggle against procrastination. It is a struggle against distractions. It is convincing yourself that it is worth a lot more to work hard to reach your goals than wasting your time. Then being a teenager is fine and having fun is perfect. But to get organized and have discipline just because you deserve to develop in different areas of your life is hard and it takes a lot of effort. And that the only way to overcome your fears is just making an effort and doing things. There's no miracle. There's no magic formula that's gonna help you reach your goals. It's just your own way. My way is not George's and it will never be Valentina's or Kiana's or Nayara. We can learn from other people, definitely. And we can get the best of whatever they tell us or we can try to follow part of the good example that they have given us, but it's to wake up the power that we have inside that will move you to make an effort, that will move you to finish your work, that will move you into making good decisions in your life and searching for the best friends, the best opportunities um, to reach any goal that you have, whether it is, so sorry, whether it is academic, personal, uh, related to sports or to the arts, like with George, you know, you have a teacher who's also a writer, a fantastic writer. So you can do so many things. You know, you can be a chemist, uh, an artist, you know, you can write literature and you can be an English coordinator. How cool is that? So the only limitation you have is in your heads. No money. No, money is not a limitation. Nope. You decide what to do with your time. That's it. I understand. Uh, it was very touching. Now I have a message for you. We admire you because you adapt to the difficult situations during the pandemic and you're an example for us. You've become a well-known educator and your work resonates beyond your school. Okay, Paola, we loved your answers. Uh, personally, I'm, I'm very inspired right now. <laughs> so uh, yeah. we think that you and our viewers must be tired of questions, right? So why don't we play something with you? Oh, okay. Okay, let's start with the first question.
the first question is, did you like English before being a teacher? I loved English. I used to have a band. I used to be a pretty informal rock singer before <laughs> I became a teacher. So I have always loved English. Yes. Huge. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, the next question is, what do you do when you have a bad day at school? I take a walk. <laughs> I take a walk around the block and I try to watch sitcoms. My favorite sitcoms are Friends and the Big Bang Theory. So having a good laugh, taking a walk, or probably talking to my mom or my friends or these people that I call binary people. I have seen a lot, I have seen that expression a lot in the social media. It's like people who feel like vitamin because they energize you. So I try to get in touch with that kind of people because, you know, having a bad day is part of life, you know? Yes, that's what I do. That's um, good. Okay. What do you do, Kiana, when you oh. have a good day at school? <laughs> I, sometimes I go to sleep because I have, um, when I have a bad day, bad day. It was a pleasure to have you here with us. And thank you for sharing your experience. And again, your example for everyone watching. Really, thank you so much. <laughs> um, and my first question is, we believe- Stop listening to you, Nayara. Does anybody else listen to Nayara? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. You know? Yes, that's what I do. That sounds good. Okay. What do you do, Kiad? When you oh. have a good day at school.